Welcome to the Gym RPG Show. If you're an Xbox or Bethesda fan, and you took everything the official social media account says at face value, then you might think that there was unanimous praise for these two powerhouses of the industry to merge as one. Bethesda would get the backing of Microsoft, one of the largest tech companies in the world, and Microsoft would get exclusive access to Bethesda games, which would make them more successful than they currently are. But I want to explain why this deal ultimately hurts gamers in a broader sense than just having the benefit of a few Bethesda games on Game Pass. September 21st, 2020. Microsoft announces that they're buying ZeniMax Media, Bethesda's parent company, for a cool $7.5 billion in cash. Executive Vice President of Gaming at Microsoft, Phil Spencer, says, We're making another investment in the most critical part of our strategy, the games. Robert Altman, chairman and CEO of ZeniMax, who just got a whole lot richer, says, The big winners today are our fans. We are continuing to develop our slate of AAA games, but now with Microsoft scale and entire game stack, our games can only get better. I hope gaming fans can take a step back from whatever position they have right now. Whether they are a PlayStation or Nintendo or PC or Xbox fan, an acquisition ultimately means control. It ultimately means ZeniMax gives up decision making for the $7.5 billion cash that it receives today. All decision making will go to Microsoft. After all, why buy a publisher or developer if they will just disobey you? If Todd Howard says today that they would like to bring their games to all platforms, well, that's really up to Microsoft to choose. Right now it's unclear exactly what Microsoft will do with their new library of Bethesda franchises. They have in the past continued to keep games on other consoles such as Minecraft and also to probe other platforms such as Steam by publishing their titles there to varying degrees of success. But we can't really ignore what businesses do in general when they make a massive company purchase and that is usually to make that content exclusive. You only have to take a look at the way Disney operates its Marvel and Star Wars franchises or the Netflix model of exclusive content that's only available on their service. At some stage, when Microsoft is big enough, they will surely host it only on their service. Despite what companies will have you believe, exclusives are not beneficial for consumers. Console warriors and single system fans talk up exclusives in the hope their system will succeed. And from Microsoft's perspective, it needs exclusives. This Bethesda move is ultimately done at the cost of the gaming community and the gaming industry, effectively taking control of one of the biggest publishers right now. It's not like Bethesda was struggling to survive and needed financial help. This is Microsoft flexing its muscle to win the console war, or rather, the gaming industry war. That's because it's one less mega western publisher to compete against, and one less developer that's putting out games on other systems, assuming they eventually become completely exclusive. The acquisition takes out Bethesda as a competitor and hurts Sony and Nintendo. Imagine running a race where you're the only runner. That's the race Microsoft wants to run. Yes, as nefarious as it sounds, Microsoft would absolutely love it if they were the only company that dominated the gaming industry, just like how Apple dominates the mobile industry. Exclusives also hurt gamers' wallets too. 
Take Nintendo, for example. Nintendo's model now is to carefully craft a narrative behind brand recognition, centering it around Mario and Zelda, and building on nostalgia and fan hype. But for this exclusivity, you are asked to pay $60 every time, even if it's a remake of three ROMs on a cartridge. And as for discounts over time, well, you can forget about that. Zelda Breath of the Wild is still $60 after a three and a half years on the market. Gamers looking at what exclusivity brings need to look no further than EA Sports and how having the exclusive rights of Madden has stagnated the franchise, barely improving on the game and relying on Ultimate Team to make its money. FIFA also does a similar thing with its exclusive FIFA League license where Pro Evolution Soccer struggles on the fringes without it. But back to Bethesda, what could this mean for fans of their games? I'm not going to sugarcoat anything here, but I could very well see Bethesda games phased out from the PS5 and the Switch. It could potentially even mean their games are Windows Store exclusive only, because why pay Steam 30% when you don't have to? That means games like Dishonored, Wolfenstein, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Doom, Starfield, The Evil Within and Prey are behind Microsoft stores, and with the way games are going all digital, there's going to be less retailers competing for the lowest price, meaning gamers will either have to pay for the Game Pass subscription fee, or pay $60 for exclusives just like Nintendo. You only have to look at the fact that the Xbox Series S is digital only to know Microsoft are making small steps to reduce the number of ways gamers can buy their games. There will be gamers that say, no matter the cost, I will be there day one for all of Bethesda's games, even if it's Microsoft Store and Xbox only. And I see most people will probably react in a similar way once the dust settles. Why worry about company politics when there's so little an individual can do? Why make noise about it when Microsoft will never rescind the acquisition? That's because I think we have to move to a place where the community takes whatever scraps of power we can to shape the gaming industry to our image and not to whatever companies want to force upon us. We're not anywhere near there yet, so this channel will do what it can to spread the message for like-minded gamers. We live in a capitalist world. One company's survival could mean the demise of others. Microsoft made a move to ensure its survival, but it came at the cost of gamers. Gamers will find Bethesda games on Microsoft stores only, and in the longer term, expect to pay more for these exclusive games. Who said that the console war was over? Because it looks like it's just getting started. And that's it for this one. Make sure to click on the like button if you like this video, and also to subscribe for more gaming videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.